What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you an update of sorts to an older video that I made almost two years ago, talking about how I approach getting 100% on various video games for my reviews, which are usually done after that milestone. But people have been asking me this a lot lately, and the previous video I made on the subject is quite old. I made it when the channel had about 10,000 subscribers, as opposed to the 133,000 we see now, so I felt it was time for a bit of an update. That said, I'll also be adding this video to a playlist with some other videos that are aimed at frequently asked questions that I see a lot. But to kind of jump into it from there, there's a few things to note right at the beginning of this. For starters, this is just my own methodology, which is itself largely centered and oriented around how I personally like to play games, as I was doing a lot of this before I was even reviewing them. And outside having a YouTube channel centered around a very specific thing, or just a game you really enjoy, generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend even bothering. Another thing to consider is that I do play a lot of the same type of games, you know, single-player RPGs, and while there are a lot of sub-genres within just that category, I've played a lot of them, so experience does play a big part in this, which we'll of course dive into a little bit here in this video. But when you do that over the course of 100 plus games, you start to see a lot of similarities and even just unique things down to specific game engines that you know kind of how it works mechanically, which makes things a bit easier. But to start this with, the first thing I do for every game really is a bit of research. This is largely because I'm planning to review the title, and one of the main things I'm actually doing here is looking for things like development notes alongside just general information about the title, how much it costs, where you can buy it, anything interesting in regards to its development cycle, a lot of which tends to be a bit more interesting for older titles that have kind of stories around their development, and when I'm reviewing older games, that's stuff I like to talk about. And for newer games, this tends to be more about hardware specs, how it's running on other platforms, things like that. When it comes to older games versus newer games, that's something you're going to be hearing me differentiate as we move through this particular video quite a bit, because my approach tends to vary significantly. But much of the initial purpose of that research is to gather that information, but another part of it is also checking out things like how how long is it going to take? How many playthroughs is this going to require? What the achievements actually look like? And sort of basically getting a rough draft of a game plan in my own head about how this is going to work and roughly how much time I should allocate for it. Because as this is my job, I game a lot, probably 8 to 12 hours on an average day, sometimes more, occasionally a little less. So combining all those things together, I can usually get a rough draft of a sort of plan for any given game. Though, of course, there are the occasional curveballs. That said, though, I do want to mention here that I'm never actually in a hurry. Something that I think comes up a lot with this kind of thing is that people assume I'm always in a rush to do more and more and more. But realistically, the nice thing about structuring my reviews this way is that it's actually kind of eliminated the need for meeting specific deadlines, so to speak. Now, obviously, there are things that will do better on a certain day, and if that's the case, I might try to arrange that. But it's not really make or break for my channel, as I'll do reviews after 100% for recent releases, maybe a week or two after it launches, and it still does really well. So while I do try to plan a time and a schedule, I'm not really in any rush. But I was talking a bit earlier about old games versus newer games, and this largely comes down to whether or not I'm going to be using guides or not. In some cases, this simply isn't necessary. Some games I use it more than others, but one of the key things to know is that with newer games, especially when you're reviewing them right as they release, or potentially before they release, as I do occasionally get review copies, in that instance, the guides don't really exist yet, so I'm kind of just forced to figure it out. And luckily, this is where experience tends to pay off, but also, in general, I would say newer games tend to be easier to 100% overall, as a lot of the design and things like that are a bit more efficient, let's say, than older previous games that, say, might require half a dozen playthroughs or something to see everything. So, somewhat ironically, while newer games I might not necessarily have a guide available, they do, on the whole, tend to be just a bit easier in that regard, from my own personal experience anyway. Now, on older titles, it depends. I'm not really playing with them like, you know, right next to my desk or anything. However, if there's something that's not immediately obvious or I'm struggling with the exact sequence of some things, as older games in general tend to have a lot of bugs when it comes to RPGs, so if there's a specific problem, looking it up can help. 
But for older games, yes, I will absolutely use a guide where applicable, as there's just not really any point not to in that situation. But that does sort of lead me into my next point. The first playthrough I do of any game tends to be how I would actually approach it for myself, making the decisions I want to make, playing the game the way I want in terms of combat, and just playing it how I want to play it. Because realistically, that's the experience that's probably going to be the most true to a regular person's experience. So I think it's important to do that first run in particular, how I would actually play the game, and then I can talk about the things that frustrate me, problems I run into, etc., in a manner that's more consistent with the average player experience. Generally, I do this on either normal or an easier difficulty, so that at the same time I'm doing this, I'm also learning all of the game's mechanics, learning about fights coming up, knowing what to expect, etc. And then on subsequent playthroughs, what I'll do is bump up the difficulty while also exploring more specific options. What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Story variations, looking for different endings, all of that stuff. That tends to be the subsequent playthroughs. And these secondary ones may or may not be full playthroughs. Oftentimes on a first playthrough, I'll make hundreds of save files if I can, though some games do limit this, which is usually something I look up in the research section, as some games only let you use one save file, other games have a limit of like 10 or 20, and other games it's unlimited, you can save as much as you want. So oftentimes I will make save points at very specific instances, so I can easily look up specific things, get footage, etc. Take a game with only one save file, for instance, per playthrough, I'm going to have to plan on structuring structuring my playthroughs around specific things usually in that case, which was the case for, say, Elden Ring. Now, one of the other big things to consider here is the difficulty of a game. In some games, this really matters. Other games, it kind of doesn't. Some games either only have one difficulty or the difficulty changes things in a way that is kind of irrelevant to the experience. For instance, Skyrim has difficulty settings, but I would argue they don't really matter. Whereas playing through a game like Divinity Original Sin 2 on different difficulties is a very different experience, which also extends to things like Iron Man modes or completing games on their hardest difficulty for achievements, etc. This is one of those things that just varies by game. And in cases where games have achievements like that, those achievements will usually be the last thing that I do. That way, after I've learned as much as I can about the game, I can focus on min-maxing or doing whatever is required to get that particular achievement while not having to worry about anything else. Again, another place where experience comes in handy as I play a lot of the same type of games, CRPGs, TRPGs, etc., which all use very similar combat systems. And over time, you kind of get a feel for what to do in certain situations to give your an advantage. Other times, in different genres, this can actually be a real headache. For instance, a game that came out last year called Solstice was one that gave me a real run for my money on some of the difficulty achievements, as that is not a type of game I typically play. So, you know, experience wasn't exactly the biggest help in that particular instance. All of that together is pretty much it. It comes down to sort of a bit of research and planning, and then executing on that in a specific way, which, when it's your job, is relatively easy to do as I have pretty much all the time in the world to do it. I work seven days a week, pretty much all day every day, but you know, from home so I can get up and go do things if I need to, which is largely how the content for this channel gets made. But I don't think any of that would be possible if I didn't absolutely love playing video games. I've talked about this in multiple places on the channel, so I won't bore you with it here, but obviously I love playing video games. This wouldn't really work if I didn't. And now that I get to commit to this full time, thanks to your viewership, I'm able to produce much more content while I do something that I love. And let's be honest, I'm a little bit obsessive about it. But I can honestly say that I love what I do, I love making content and reviews for you guys to watch, so hopefully this answered some questions in that regard. If you have any other questions on the subject that I didn't cover, feel free to drop them below, I'll probably answer them. Though I will say the channel's getting so big that it's getting a little difficult to respond to comments, even though I try to set aside some time every day to do so. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. Again, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and allowing me to do this for a living. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but truly, I can't say it enough. Thank you. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.